My name is Lane, aka Fleetwood. I've been making music for years now with my brother Ducati James. But more importantly, um, I've been an opiate addict for over a decade now. At this moment, um, I'm coming off fentanyl, cold turkey. Um, it's been a journey. I've had two years of sobriety on a couple occasions and some periods of sobriety in between. never uh, come off quite like this and so I figured you know the only way to help me through this is to help somebody else do it so I'll tell you a little bit about what I'm going through right now right now it is about 10 p.m. it's been 23 hours since uh, I last used and uh, it's rough I've spent the better part of the afternoon just cramping and sweating and vomiting and coming out of both ends flipping around on the toilet But I think worse than the flu-like flu symptoms, it's just the feeling that it's never going to get better. It's never going to be okay. I'm going to be a piece of shit for life. Um, and, you know, I'm just sick of it. primary sim symptoms are uh, cramping, stomach cramping, losing fluids just about any way you can imagine, I can't even swallow my saliva, um, diarrhea, cold sweating, shaking. I can't actually put my arms out to a full extension because my nerves are so shot. I just, it's very uncomfortable feeling to try to extend them fully. My arms are just... Uh, fuck. It's one of those things where I know there's a lot of vlogs on here about this stuff, but I figured I need to show the uglier side of it. And I debated doing this. Um, my lovely girlfriend has been doctoring me through the afternoon pretty much and uh, honestly this is pretty much the first opportunity without vomiting or uh, just being unable to talk, being very depressed. It's a different depression. It's a, it's a, everything's crashing in on me. I guess that's not so different than what you, a lot of you experience with depression, but I mean, you're experiencing no pleasure, nothing. You know what I mean? You could have sex. You could uh, smoke a bowl. You could eat the best steak in the world. You could hug the person you love the most. You could have them, you could have them in your arms. And it just doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, this stuff turns you into something that isn't human. This journey started off for me with painkillers. And um, just doing oxycodone 30s and, uh, and just graduating 
from there, um, I got off the pills, I got clean, I went to college, I graduated from a place called Clemson University, the national champions, um, yes sir, yes sir, and uh, I stayed clean for over two years, and then I relapsed, I met up with some old friends, I was in some familiar environments, and uh, I let him get the best of me. And hmm, ow, fuck. And uh, I relapsed on on thirties. This was back in uh, 2013, going into 2014. At that time, I had been on painkillers. I had been abusing drugs, abusing opiates since I was about 14 years old. And I had been addicted since about 16. So this is my first time coming off. I went to a treatment facility. And they gave me a drug called clonidine. And this is essentially, it's a blood pressure medication. When you're going through opiate withdrawal, your blood pressure is sky high. It causes a lot of issues, mainly anxiety. Um, and... Sorry, this is very difficult um, to, re to both remember and to speak. I'm very fatigued right now. I've been vomiting. If I could, if I could compare it to something, I would say it's a lot of the symptoms are similar to like food poisoning. At least for me, I know a lot of people say flu symptoms. Oh, uh, I think it's more like kind of food poisoning. Um, every everything's coming out as fluids. You can't hold anything down. You can't hold applesauce down. You can't hold, just, I mean, I've been drinking water. That's it, water for almost a whole day now. And uh, everything, just your stomach acid's coming. Even if you don't eat, I can guarantee you you're still gonna be having diarrhea. You're gonna have vomiting. It doesn't matter what you do. But, um, so, I told myself, oh, I'm gonna eat some in previous withdrawals, previous detoxes. I tried to force feed myself a little bit um, with the coming off pain pills. But I knew that this time coming off fentanyl is just, I mean, it's, 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 it's hell. I mean, I, if I could imagine hell, this would pretty much be it. You know, but back to my history. Uh, I got clean. I went to a rehabilitation in North Carolina. They gave me clonidine. I did a cold detox. I only stayed there six days. I got in an argument with some of the staff, and I AMA'd. That's against medical advice. And I left. I stormed out. The woman, I'll never forget. She was the sweetest lady in the world. She looked at me and she told me, I hope you know that I love you, even though we had argued. And you also need to know that there's no way you're going to stay clean. There's no way. There's Statistically, there's no way you'll stay in here only six days and stay, stay clean. And she was ultimately right, but in my opinion, on principle, she wasn't right. I got out of that program. I stayed clean, like I said, for over two years. With no programs, no nothing, no classes, no nothing. Just sheer, sheer willpower. Um, like I said, I went to Clemson. I graduated. And in 2014, I relapsed. Around that time, heroin was starting to creep onto the scene where I'm from, in the Carolinas, primarily North Carolina, and, uh, and it's cheaper, and so, you know, what are you going to do? 
you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta avoid the sickness. Still keep going to work. Keep going to school. Try to be a functioning citizen. So in 2014, I got on heroin, and I got on Xanax. And long story short, I ended up at my house. The SWAT team. Excuse me. I was down the road when my parents were home. The local SWAT team had showed up to their house and were looking for me. Now what they were trying to do is called 5150. Sorry, I know that's gross. Huh? And they try and they fifty one fifty me, which basically means that I was so high at the time and I was so just lost that they deemed I would be a, my you know one of my friends, one of my good buddies who was on drugs too. That's what's crazy. Uh, called them and just said, "Look, I'm scared. This is my friend. I don't want him to die. I think he's going to hurt himself, and I'll always love you for that. You know who you are, Josh." I'll always love you for that man. I wasn't happy that day necessarily, but uh, thank you so much for that. That really does mean a lot to me in this fight, because it is a—it's a war. This shit is a war. You better believe that. You may think you've won the battle, but sometimes there's many battles. You know, I've come to find that find that out and uh, so I met a girl the girl that I'm with to this day luckily fortunately still and the whole reason I want to get off this is because of her I, I met her after getting out of the, my second rehab program I went to rehab at the end or to, excuse me towards the middle of 2014 after getting on heroin in Florida and it was like a Scientologist place it was like a it's called Narconon so it wasn't a 12 step it's a Narconon program and and once again no drugs cold detox no suboxone I was really into that at that time I was gun ho that you know it's, it was the only way. The only way was to cold turkey, which is why I'm in this position. So I went there. They had basically no medication, maybe some over-the-counter medication they would give you, worse come to worse, like a modium or something, and a sauna. And this was in Spring Hill, Florida. And that's it. I mean, we were... The guy... The owner was in recovery as well, and he had basically bought a foreclosed old folks home and had started his own rehab down there in Spring Hill. And uh, that was my second inpatient program. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I apologize for this, y'all. I'm very fatigued, I'm very lightheaded, I'm very caught in my head so I'm literally just trying to catch my breath but um so I come out of there after a few weeks and once again I'm on top of the world I'm really making my music I'm really getting into everything you know that's when I wrote flashback and did all that songs, you know, flashback to the past when I was pushing packs. And, uh, and everything was going awesome. And then, one night, when I was out hanging with friends, hanging with a, a good crowd of people, I got a little too intoxicated. I've never had issues with alcohol, um, personally. But I was using it as a crutch, and I've come to find that out now. And I ended up t 
breaking my ankle. I ended up wrestling around that night, doing a bunch of stupid shit, acting a fool. I broke my left ankle. I tore my ACL in my right knee. Um, and I was bedridden for a while. And not only was I bedridden, Oh, hold on. Yeah, I'm alright. I'm alright, just some cramps. Just a little bit, I'm just, just to explain what's happening. It feels like your body's kind of inside out, literally. Yeah. Uh, it's just these very anxious feelings in your nerves and your bones and every fiber of your being. Go back to talking about how um, and you had to have surgery. And yeah, you had okay. Pain medication. So anyway, bedridden. I at that point I hadn't been on Suboxone. Um, I had I didn't have an official chart. Never been to the ER for anything related to it. So the doctor obviously uh, was prescribed me pain medication. Wasn't much, but since I hadn't been doing it and I didn't have a tolerance and I had never been prescribed them, I uh, I rationalized it and I said, you know what? I'm getting them prescribed. I'm hurt. You know, this is this is normal. This is what like a normal person does, right? Like they don't go get it on the street. They don't go steal shit from Walmart. And, take receipts out of trash cans at Walmart, go find the item in the store and take it to the returns and they don't have to obsess 24 hours a day, you know, about it. I thought this was the normal way. So like a fool, given, even given my history at that point, I started taking the hydrocodone and it was kind of like a slow drip of a faucet, but Eventually, I found myself back out there, smoking heroin, you know, smoking fentanyl, and it just got out of control. It just got absolutely out of control, and that's when I confronted everybody for the third time and said, you know, here we go again. You know, I need help. So I went out to a different program. A place, this is in 2016. A place in Las Vegas. I know, ironic, right? But getting clean in Vegas. But, uh. And it was great. It was great. It was like, it, you know, they would, you would live at your house in the suburbs with all your people. And then you would kind of get on the van, you know, get in the car or whatever, and go to campus, which was five minutes down the road. Campus was awesome. It's a great program. I'll always be thankful to Dave. He was a great mentor. And I stayed there for a few weeks. And left early again for the third time. Third program, third time leaving early. Because I just get cocky. I get cocky, I get bored. So I go back to making music. Ducati and I put out basically every other song, Creflo, Jim Jameson, you know, all in on our channel. And and I think it just boils down to feeling life. You know, we can put terms on all this stuff. We can say you're 
generalized anxiety disorder. We can say you have major bipolar disorder, you're depressed, you're this and that. I think that the honest to God's answer is sometimes life's just tough. But in that toughness, you are what you overcome. Everybody needs a sense of purpose. And I think sometimes what may seem like your greatest downfall, maybe you need to run right towards that. Maybe the universe is trying to tell you something. Maybe it, it's using you as a vessel. And if you can do it, and if you can show other people, then maybe you will solidify yourself in your sobriety. And that's something I failed to do along this sobriety journey. And I've been a chronic relapser. Um, is to really get involved with other people's sobriety. And showing them how shitty this is. It's not necessary. You know, not, nobody needs to do this. Um, to themselves. Life's hard enough. You know, why be just... Why jack up all your receptors? Jack up all your chem levels? Um, so, I kind of decided I have court tomorrow, the 12th, for this DUI. I'm a second DUI. It's going to be expensive. And I think it was just one of those moments. I just talked with some people today and I said, you know what, let's do this. I mean, time is your most valuable asset. And that's what I want to stress to you guys. If you think you need to go on Suboxone, go on it. I have taken Suboxone. I ended up taking Suboxone when I got out of Las Vegas uh, to try to taper off myself. And it did help a little bit, but it just didn't really work for me. But if that's what you need, it's a hell of a lot safer. Um, probably not methadone. It has a very long half life, and it's it's a long withdrawal. It can be it can be like a month withdrawal on methadone. When fentanyl may be three or four days, then you're out of it. But it's going to be rough. It's going to be a, a constant constant battle. But I just want you guys to know that look, this is possible. I know it feels like everything's stacked against you like you can't do anything right but maybe that is the message the universe is trying to send you this is something you can do right control what you can control in life control what you can control I think I'm gonna stop for a minute